The final race in Jog's 2009 calendar got underway on Friday evening in a nice 11 knot breeze from the west-southwest. This was the second race to Cherbourg this year for the Jog fleet and the seven boats took the start for the smaller boats in Class 5. Zara was first into Cherbourg in an elapsed time of just over 14 and a half hours. Fifteen minutes later she was followed home by Whistler and these two also took the same places on corrected time. Third on handicap was Moondog. Class 5's overall offshore series season winner is Blustery Day with Zara in second and Shadow third. Fifteen yachts started in class four and beat west towards the needles in the last of the sunshine and the best breeze of the day. Just So was first to finish in just 11 hours and 48 minutes, almost two hours ahead of the next boat in the class, which was Blustery Day. Just So took the handicap win and Blustery Day was second, with Long Pierre taking third. Just So has also won Class 4's Offshore Series, with Draghi 2 taking second and Long Pierre in third. Among the 12 boats that started in Class 3, the Line Honours winner also took the win on corrected time. Floating Boater led the fleet home in 11 hours 18 minutes, over half an hour ahead of the next boat, Cerulean. Floating Boater also took a corrected time win ahead of Night Owl in second, with Cerulean again taking third. Class 3 season's points winner for the Offshore Series is Night Owl. In second is Essex Girl and Tearaway 2 took third. Late summer sunshine bathed the Solent for the second weekend in a row, but again the wind refused to blow, making life difficult for the racers. The local one design fleet of FAR 45s was in action this weekend with racing for the Royal Thames Yacht Club Staples Trophy. Or rather they should have been in action had the wind obliged. The first race on Saturday got away in just four knots from the north. A large right hand shift made the committee boat the favoured end and there was a bit of argy bargy as about half the fleet wanted the spot. Werewolf got herself in a bit of a mess but was able to duck the stern of Alice too only to fail to cross the bow of Atomic, leaving her impaled on an Atomic spinnaker pole. Although Werewolf took a penalty turn just after the start, she then, very surprisingly, went on to protest Atomic. That evening Werewolf lost the protest and was disqualified on the grounds of serious damage. Alice too led around the windward mark with a bit of a gap to Rebel, and the fleet set off on a slow downwind leg. By the lured mark, Rebel had slipped past Alice 2 and rounded first. But Alice made the best rounding and came away from a mark with more speed. Up the next beat, the wind dropped even further until it was almost a flat calm. The race was shortened at the windward mark where the wind lottery had shaken up the order yet again. Exabyte 4 took the race win ahead of Alice 2 and Werewolf, although Werewolf was later disqualified. The rest of the fleet failed to finish in the time limit and the wind then disappeared for the rest of the day, making further racing impossible. On Sunday there was a touch more wind for the first race of the day and by the end of the first lap it was Rebel leading the fleet with Atomic second. But Atomic had a mark rounding they'd like to forget which allowed Werewolf to pull alongside. The right side of a second beat delivered more pressure and a right hand shift and by the final mark it was Rebel in a clear lead with Atomic again comfortable in second. At the finish the order remained the same with Rebel taking the gun with Atomic in second and Werewolf third. Once again the wind died and that was the end of racing for the day. With only two of the hoped for eight races sailed the weekend went to Rebel with Atomic taking second and Alice 2 in third. The sixth and final round of the Red Funnel Cows Keelboat Championship was being run by the Royal Corinthian Yacht Club this weekend. On Saturday there was zero wind and a double AP was flown until racing was eventually abandoned. On Sunday the faintest of breezes in the morning tempted the race committee afloat. 
it takes a special kind of race officer to signal a start in drifting conditions and a foul tide. He's either eternally optimistic or has a wicked sense of humour. We're not sure which is true of a Corinthian's Jamie Clark, but this start for the Etchells went ahead and was painful to watch. The first two Etchells, Swedish Blue and China White, made it round the shortened course while the rest were still rounding the first mark. Among the Darings it was no better with the leaders finding a breath of wind on the right hand side of the course to propel them slowly up the beat. Fortunately the tide was running to take them down to the leeward mark. By the time we'd watched the only two dragons which made it to the windward mark, the excitement was all too much for us and we went home to lie down in a darkened room. Apparently debutante won the Daring's race from Division Bell and Double Knot, while Niord finished ahead of Supremacy in the Dragons. Join us next week for the annual Asto Regatta and the next round of the Cows Keelboat Solent Series. See you then.